Hi everybody, this is Kimberly from Starfish Design Embroidery Group. Hopefully you can see me. Sorry, I'm just having a nightmare with this zipper pole. Oh my goodness, I usually don't have any issues with them, but today I was having lots of trouble getting a zipper pole on. So, now my zipper's all wrinkly. Oh my goodness, hopefully it'll be okay. So today we're making, um, I don't have a name for this bag yet, but it is an applique bag um, in the applique series. So, I hope the fabrics are going to work out, to be honest. I'm not sure. In my upstairs, they looks like they matched. So, um, what you can do with this is, we're going to do a reverse applique. So, I put the fabric on the bottom. But I put a placement line in here. So, you can take your, um, your hoop to your fabric and find and line it up and make a placement. So, that's what that placement line is for at the beginning. So, we're going to set this aside for a second. Now we're going to get our zipper, and as always, we have our zipper placement line. The middle line is going to fall along with the line in the middle of your zipper teeth. And we're going to tape this down. And anybody who's watched my videos before knows what I do. I call it walking the um, zipper. So I tape down one end, and then I watch and I, I walk the zipper down the zipper tape placement line. And by doing this... I'm assured that I'm going to get a nice, even reveal. Oh, this is going to be really tight on my zipper. I might have to cut a new one. I am. Oh, that trouble. And I'm going to have to get new zipper tape. I'm, it's too tight. I end up having to trim off too much of it. Ah. Oh, okay. Please let me get the pole back on it fast. <laughs> oh, so I'm going to have to start the video again. All right, this one's, I know this pole works, so I'm going to take this pole and use it. Save that for something else. All right, let's try it. I did this without this, the fork is what I ended up doing the last time. That finally ended up working. Sometimes I can do it like this, and I'm just holding it against the table. In this case, yep, it worked. Perfect. Sometimes it works that easy, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, here we go again. So a zipper. So we're going to put the um, end of the zipper at the end of the um, placement lines. And I'm going to pull the zipper up at the end and make sure that the middle of the zipper is over the middle of the line. Or over the center placement line. There's three lines. The top of the bag, where the top of the zipper um, the reason I do it this way, I can't speak for anybody else, the reason I do it this way is because in my experience of pack purchasing prepackaged zippers, they're not always exactly one inch. And I don't want you to try and have to figure out how to center a seven eighths inch zipper in a one inch line or a one and a quarter inch zipper, which is what the number five zippers are in a one inch line. So if you just center the zipper tape over this line each time, you're, you're assured of getting almost the best um, lay, lay placement of your zipper. And when you do that, then your bags look better. That's one thing you can tell with a um, home crafted bag is if the zipper's not even. Because those people who are making manufactured bags, they do it so much they can do it in their sleep. So now that I have the right side all done, then I come back over and I put a little bit of tape on this side because if you don't, it'll get dislodged when you're sewing, tacking down your zipper. I try to get the zipper tape, the, the tape on the very edge. I'm not always successful. I'm going to take this down. I don't want anything moving around on the hoop. So we're going to tape it down here. The end of our zipper and then we're going to tape this little jingly pole down just so it doesn't come loose you just never know okay now we're going to go ahead and run our tack down for our zipper oops totally didn't mean to do that And you can see I filled up as much of this frame. This is a 7.9 by 7.9. And I took up as much of this frame as I could possibly take. I 
like this size bag though because it's not too long and it's not too wide. And so when you have it on your hip, it actually looks very nice. I need to take a picture with the um, mannequin because I haven't taken a picture of my most recent bags with the mannequin. Also, one word of advice, if you haven't seen my videos before, I have a 500E Janome and the presser foot, oftentimes it'll go, I'll take the hoop like this to move and pull the tail to cut it. I could either turn the tail off, which drives me crazy, and I have to jump up, cut all those jump strings, and the jump strings could actually cut, hang up on you. Or on this machine, they, I could push this up, and it brings the presser foot up higher. So as it travels around, I can make sure I avoid hitting the zipper pull or the D-ring straps. So you'll see me do that often. That's what I'm doing. All right, some of this tape I can reuse. My tape mound down here is growing. So, um, this is just a tack down. So if you pull some of the stitches out, it's not the end of the world, but when you are pulling the tape, um, it helps to hold the tape against the stitches and pull it against it like that, instead of just what I just did. So if you pull it against the stitches like this, you won't pull the stitches out. Okay. We're not opening our zipper. Leave your zipper alone. Now we're going to go ahead and place our lining on our back. And you might have two pieces of lining, or in my case, and my lining doesn't match. I'm sorry, that's okay. We're going to add on this um, pocket card slot lining on the back. But we want just our regular lining on the back that's going to be against the front of the bag. So you're going to put your lining. Um, this should be 9 by 9 You're going to put your lining so that it's centered over the back and along the bottom of the zipper tape or the zipper placement line. If you're using a one and a quarter inch zipper, um, make sure you're placing it with the zipper placement line, not the actual zipper. I do try to make the measurements what, uh, generous enough that that will be okay if you did it with the zipper. But um, and, and any of my bags made in from 2020 on um, should work with a number five zipper. I've digitized them so that the stitch, the tack down is approximately one quarter inch away from the center zipper teeth, which is what you need for the wider teeth of the number five zipper. Number five zipper means that the coils are five millimeters wide. This is number three, the coils are three millimeters wide. Okay, so now we need one of our um, exterior panels and the same thing. And this is actually really thick, and I hope that my genome can handle it. Um, this final I chose was really thick, and I should have thought twice about it. And I recommend that you switch when you're not doing any kind of um, embroidery. Once you get to the construction part of the bag, I recommend that you switch to a size 90 needle. I might have a 90 in here from the last time. I... Um, prefer the embroidery needles for, um, I prefer the embroidery needles. They work better with the embroidery thread, but a uh, universal needle will work as well. I don't recommend using other types of needles. Okay, now we're gonna flip over to the back. And we're momentarily, we're gonna end up moving this out of the way again, but for right now we need to top stitch the back. So we're gonna fold this down, be very gingerly. I'm being a little aggressive here. Finger crease it. Make sure you try and crease it as well as you can so that you don't have extra up here like this. See I, how that is? Can you see that? If you don't finger crease it, it's gonna get like this and that might hold up your zipper pull. So pull it tautly, finger crease and make sure this is nice and finger and creased. Ah, try not to undo your thread from your machine. And then likewise, we're gonna fold this down and we're gonna top stitch. And hold this against a firm surface. And if you have a, um, ooh, that zipper, oh shoot. I thought it would match, but now I'm having second guesses. Oh well, it's too late. This is actually really thick vinyl. Ugh, oh, I don't know how it's gonna handle. We're gonna. We're trying, guys, though. So I'm going to try and see where's the thicker thread at or tape. I need to hold that down. 
I lost the big piece of big roll of tape. I can't even uh, finger crease it. I don't know where my boning tool is at. But if you have a boning tool, you can boning tool across that. Okay, this was not the best vinyl to pick for this in the hoop project. I can tell you that now. Okay, let's, we're just gonna have to hope it, oh, I, hold down enough for us to top stitch it. I might have to kind of guide my hand. Oh, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hold it down here. Don't ever keep your hands up there, but I'm gonna hold it tautly down here to do the top stitch. Just help guide it. I'm not holding it real tight because then it'll go off kilter. tough bag to get through. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to lift both panels up. The one on the back, we're going to tape it out of the way and it's going to stay out of the way for the next few steps. So pull it up here. If your hoop attachment is at the top or where this is going to get in place in the way, then go ahead and fold this fabric up, tape it out of the way, pin it out of the way, whatever you have to do. Make sure it's out of the way. Likewise, we're going to fold this up because I'm going to reverse applique. So what I want to do is put my fabric down here. The alternative would be you would um, run the placement stitch here, put your fabric, run the tack down and trim it. But I'm going to reverse applique so the fibers of the cotton are on the bottom of the vinyl and I'm going to get a cleaner finish. So I'm going to go ahead and approximate where I want this at. So I'm just kind of looking and then I'll know this corner is right here. So um, I can guesstimate where I want to put it. So I'm going to fold this down so I can see the curve there. There we go. And I do have Deckelville light on the back of this. I'm just kind of winging it and pulling it up and looking. Uh, this is going to be good right here, I think. Deckelville light is a nice interfacing. Since I'm working with quilting cotton, that's going to give us, bring that cotton up to a closer thickness as our vinyl. In this case, not even close because this vinyl is really thick. Okay, now we're gonna run the placement stitch, which we're gonna use as a rough tack down for our cotton. And this is also the opportunity that you'll have to see how it's gonna look. And if it's not centered the way you want it, which mine's a little bit off, but I'm gonna leave it. You could pull the stitches out and redo it, but I'm just gonna leave it. Now I don't have it's not too much extra fabric here, but I'm gonna rough cut um, some of that fabric off so it doesn't land in our seam allowance. So really right here. All right. Now you're gonna go ahead and lay your vinyl down again. And now you're gonna run what would be the tack down stitch. In this case, since we're doing reverse applique, it's going to be where we're going to cut out the reverse, right? And it's probably going to be hard to see with the same thread color. I'll be able to see it, but you may not be able to see it very well on your side. So, oh, I forgot. Before I do that, what's a good idea to do is go ahead and get a little start with a seam ripper in the center of your vinyl, you can see when you have it laid down so that you have somewhere to start cutting that away. All right. This is a bean stitch. So if you're doing an applique on top, it's a nice, sturdy stitch so if you do accidentally cut a little bit into it when you're trimming it's um 
not gonna you're not gonna lose the entire piece of material. So you're gonna need your um duck bill scissors to trim this out. And I'm going to cut out the satin stitching part because that will take a few minutes. Um, so let me get this cut out and show you and then I'm going to do the satin stitching. But I will cut that out of the video. Okay, where's that little start? I just, I can't even see the start. So I don't think you're going to be able to see because I used the similar color, but right here. So now I need to find where I started that cut at. Can't even see it. Oh, there it is. And then I can go ahead and get my um, scissors in there. I just had it. Now I lost it. There it is. I can get my scissors in there, and I don't want to risk cutting into my fabric. So I'm gingerly going to pull this up and then get my scissors started under here. And I'm going to go to one edge so I can look underneath and see this, the fabric. And you're going to be very careful because you have the fabric under there. And then just keep your scissors as close to the stitch as you can. You really should have the duck bill against the part you don't want to cut. But when you're doing this, it's a really tight cut in here. So you can't really have it against this, the fabric. The fabric is what you don't want to cut. But since we're doing this reverse applique, it's not easy. So get close to those little um, sharp corners as you can. But you don't need to get all the way in there because... Um, the satin stitching will cover that up. It comes out and past that. So just get as close as you can to there. And you're just making sure that you're not cutting into your fabric underneath. Or if this is the outside, if you had the applique on top, you would be going alongside like this with the duck bill against the applique. And I'm hoping I salvage enough of this material to make the D-ring straps because I did not bring extra vinyl for that. Oh, actually, I don't even know if the D-ring, this is going to work for D-ring straps. This is so thick. Y'all, it's so thick. And I'm trying to get really close to that bean stitch. But this is really thick vinyl, so... Oh. I don't know how the applique is going to cover it well. This is one of those things where, though, you know, um, I see so often, not even just about me. Actually, I haven't seen a lot of complaints about myself, but about any digitizer. And so many will be like, oh, this look, it looks horrible. Their digitizing is so bad. And it's not the digitizing. It's the, the person. You have to take the time to test and study and read and learn about this because, you need to have the right um, stabilization, the right foundation. When I first started, man, oh, it was a mess. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And part of it was I did have a really bad design. But even when I had OESD designs, which you all know, if you've been out here for a long time, you pay $150 for a PC card with six designs on it. And even with those, I was having horrible results. And like, obviously... It's not them. They're selling these things by the, you know, thousands and thousands. So I had to take and get, I got online then. I had to learn about proper stabilization and proper materials. And um, some, not all materials are made to do embroidery. This is from my punk embroidery. Um, and she does extensive testing. But the bottom line is not all machines can handle getting through all these thick materials. And especially when you're talking about a single needle machine, which is why I test on a single needle machine. Because I found when I had one of my first patterns out, it stitched beautifully on my multi-needle machine. I did the top zipper where you're it's a real top zipper. You cut the stabilizer and you fold the zipper down. And so the teeth on top of each other stitched beautifully on my machine. But I went ahead and got some people to test. And man, people were like, no, it's breaking my needles, Kimberly, and this, that, the other. And I had to learn the hard way. Single needle machines cannot handle all these thickness of layer. They're not meant to. They're not designed to be going through all of this. I think I'm okay. This part here is worrying me a little bit.
but I think I'm okay. So I switched over and I got really lucky and found, first I found a 350E, which is only a five by seven. And then I found this one and I got really lucky because now I do all my um, testing on this machine. So I know if this machine works, it's gonna work for the majority of people. I did not do too bad of a job fussy cutting this, but I'm not convinced my fabric colors were good. Now, I know I don't need to because this is a really thick vinyl, but this is very heavy satin stitching. So this is the time that you should consider adding some more stabilizer behind here to support the satin stitching. It's, it's a lot, there's a lot. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start the satin stitching and I'm gonna go ahead and probably block out this piece of the video for you. Okay, that satin stitching is all done and if you can look closely, I had a little bit of challenge with some um, tension there or I didn't cut the vinyl well. It doesn't look as bad when I pick it up as it did when it was stitching out. I probably should have used a different color of thread. Okay, anyway, so we're ready to go ahead and, um, and look, you see all that bobbin stitch only. That's not good. I should be seeing some of the top stitch. So I think that's um, the condition that I probably should have put some extra stabilizer back here. We're gonna go ahead and pull this down and I'm gonna put a little piece of tape here cause that one buckled up over there. And if we don't tape that down, it's gonna come loose while we're stitching. And we're gonna go ahead and run the stitch, the placement for our D-ring strap connectors. Now there's a placement on the um, both sides and on the top. Uh, you don't need to use all those placements, obviously. Um, I'm actually gonna use the sides on this one. I normally use a top, but I think for this side, this shape bag, I'm gonna use the sides. And I got a tip from a customer to change the placement stitches to a zigzag. So it's easier to see. I thought that was a brilliant tip. So I'm gonna give him a little, some free patterns to thank him. And I think I need to adjust that placement. I'm glad I'm not doing that one. It's too far over the top, so I'll fix that. I give a placement as a general guide. Obviously you can put the hooks wherever you want. So I like to have just a little bit of space between the top stitching and my D-ring connector. And so you'll see here's the stitching here, here. So I'm going to, actually I need to trim off a tiny piece of this vinyl here, my excess, because I don't have enough from the applique piece for the D-ring connector. So I'm gonna put the D-ring connectors on the side and I'm really worried if I'm gonna be able to cut through all this, to be honest. This is much thicker than I thought it would be um, when I picked it. So, wish I had, you know what I think I'm gonna do? This pattern is much thinner and kind of matches that. I'm gonna use this for the D-ring connectors. because I really don't know that I can get through that. The um, multiple la layers of that raised dots. That's perfect. This is perfect, just like it was. Just waiting to do this. Like patent, we'll just pull out a little bit of that green from the flower and it's thinner. All right, my cutting looks horrible, but oh, okay, whatever. So we're gonna go ahead and tape this down. And you need to make sure you have enough room for your presser foot to clear the um, D-ring tack down and the D-ring. So I usually find about three quarters inch works for me. So I'm gonna tape that down. I wish I could find what I did with the wide tape. I much prefer using the wide tape for this purpose. I'll just do two pieces of this. So um, I like to tape it down so that there's a little bit of a ramp or a bridge for the 
press our foot to glide along as it comes up and, and gets a hold of the vinyl because it's very thick. All right. Yeah, that should be good. And let's do the one over here. Yeah, this is a happy accident. I like this actually. It's gonna pull in the, the green really well. And you could actually angle this. So if you wanted it to be angled up like this on the side of the bag, you could angle it too. Today is Friday, February 28th leap year so not the last day of the month we have a 29th so everybody whose birthday is february 29th gets to have a big celebration tomorrow i'm just double checking this again always make sure you have enough clearance for your presser foot and those d-ring strap connectors okay now i'm going to do this track down and again, it's gonna go on either side. And I have to keep be careful that it doesn't hit that. So I have to lift my presser foot up. So I'll see what it hit the D-ring. I'm actually gonna just go ahead and fast forward um, through the next stitches. There's no sense in stitching them. We don't need them. <clears throat> if you can do that on your machine, go ahead and do that. If you can't do that on your machine, then just go ahead and let it stitch. You see how it's already starting to pull. I need to make sure. I'm okay. My bobbin is okay. I actually am getting really low on bobbin. All right, let's see if we can make it through. I don't know why this didn't cut. So now we need to go ahead and remove this tape. And we're going to add our top and our lining in the back which for our, our case is our credit card pockets sorry i have tape all over the place here i have tape on my clothes man i was at work the other day and i like looked down and it went through the washer and the dryer and i had tape on me it's like whoa try to remember and pull the tape out as you go along those areas where it's going to be doubled. Okay, so here's the, we're going to get to the good stuff now. I'm going to take our ruler, and of course, I keep forgetting to grab a pen. I had a pen here, and my son took off with it. So I'm going to use a pen. So you can grab your ruler, and you're going to take, um, for most bags, most designers, I'm um, speaking for me, my placement stitches, the... Um, are the, the ends of the bag. So I'm gonna go with the mud in the middle for the um, zipper teeth because this bag curves out. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure and that is four. Let's see, so I'm starting at four. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. So divide seven and a half by two and you get 3.75. So one, two, three, 0.75 is my halfway mark. So I want, let's double check that. Three and five eighths actually right there. Three and five eighths. Three and five eighths. What did I say? Okay. We're going to take our lining credit card slot you see you have a mark right here that should um the, div the the middle of it and then you're going to have this line up with the top of your zipper teeth so it's going to be face down so fold this back so you can see where that little line is at and make sure it matches that pin or if you wrote it on there you have a pen and you marked it with ink and then the top basting line is going to go right at the top of your zipper. 
your zipper placement line. So secure that in place, and once you get that taped down, then tape down the side so it doesn't come loose. So again, your center mark there, and the top line goes to the top of the um, zipper tape. You'll have excess material on the top of the um, lining that we'll trim off later. This is very important. You need to make sure you have clearance for your presser foot and this um, zipper pole here. So I um, have it at one inch, so it should be clearance, but you need to measure your machine. It should be enough for almost any machine. Okay, so I have that nice and centered. I'm gonna tape this in really well on the top so it doesn't come loose. And you can actually pin this from the front um, since it's fabric, if you the since the vinyl's not down in the in the front yet. Then you can actually, after you run the next stitch, you can pull this up and make sure it still looks good and redo it if you needed to. So, if this all this bulk causes you issues underneath here. Put a, a, a layer of um, tearaway underneath it. I'm going to try it without because I didn't have any trouble the last time. And now I'm going to go ahead and lay this exterior face down, right side down, so it's aligned with the top of the zipper, and tape that down and pray because I'm going through a lot of layers here. I don't know what size needle I have in there. I'm actually going to double check it and see if I can find a 9014 because I think this is a 7511 and I really don't think that's going to be enough to get through all those layers. Yep, it is. One moment. I'm going to be right back. I think I have some 9014s in another room. Okay, I'm losing my mind. Sorry guys. I had a bag full of oh here it is. <laughs> okay, I know I brought this out here. Okay, sorry about that. I hope there's some 90s in here. Bought a whole bunch of oh yes 9014. All right, awesome. So I'm gonna switch out to a 9014. And again, this is just a universal needle. Um, I have a leather one too, but I'm just using the universal. It's worked for me in the past because we're not doing any um, embroidery at this point. We're just using this machine as a sewing machine. If you were doing embroidery, I'd want the embroidery needle because it has a wider um, opening, or this piece, it's, it's different. And so it um, actually um, allows the thread to glide in and out of the needle better with less friction. So when you're doing like that high speed satin stitching I just did, it's um, much better for that. Let's see if the needle thread will work. It hasn't been my friend tonight. Hey, it did. All right, I feel better now. <laughs> I was like, I don't know how this is gonna make it through. 
All right, make sure nothing dislodged on the bottom. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do our um, stitching. So I am not top stitching the vinyl because um, I don't necessarily like the, the pucker look you get at the top, but I am going to fold this um, back up for the what would be the top stitching. I do two layers of stitching on the top, even though I'm not doing top stitching, just to give that security to the zipper. But I'm gonna fold this lining up when I do that second row of stitching so that it secures the lining to the um, zipper tape and it's not baggy underneath. So this is gonna be the tricky part because now my zipper's up, right? So I'm gonna be very careful and hope that this doesn't get hung up underneath here. And in fact, I'm gonna put a piece of tear away right underneath there and guide that zipper pull. And it's gonna stitch right here. So you need to make sure you have room if you're gonna do this. Actually, knowing that, I'm going to lower this zipper another half an inch in the pattern. All right, we'll see if this is gonna work. You can skip this if it doesn't, if you don't think it's gonna work on your machine. All right, so where's that zipper pull at? I'm trying to find it. Sorry, okay, the zipper pulls right here. So it's out of the stat path, but this, this is gonna run another layer of stitches right here, and the zipper pull is out of the path. So I know it's okay. But if you have a bigger presser foot than I do, right to that zipper pull, then you may need to skip this step. And that's fine, it just, it's fine if you don't um, tack it down. Okay. Oh, now we're gonna go ahead and open our zipper up and we already have the back pulled up so we don't need to pull that up now. But so now you'll see that we have that um, top stitch. I'm gonna leave this in here for right now. But um, we have that top stitch so I'll show you when we're all done what that means. But now we need to open up our zipper. And before I do that, I'm actually gonna remove the, um... no, I'm gonna leave it in place now. I, some, I go back and forth on when it's best to remove the stabilizer behind the zipper. I changed my mind whether it's best to do it now or best to do it later. And I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that jingly jangly is in the middle so it doesn't get hooked up. This is heavy enough, I don't really need to tape this down. Um, make sure that you, on the bottom you don't have your second lining and we're going to do our partial exterior seam and this is going to be the location of your opening um, for turning the back and it's going to run some travel stitches so it takes you back up there in case your machine doesn't like traveling very well and you can pull these stitches out if they get in your way later it's just to help get it up to that um, area without dragging on the seat. Oh, I should have pulled that down better. See, it's baggy there. That's okay. I'm gonna pull those travel stitches out with my seam ripper. See if I can fix this bagginess I just created. And you can leave these in, it's on the outside of the bag, but I didn't hold down my thing, so it's kind of baggy here. So I'm just gonna try and, actually I'm gonna pull, this isn't, I'm not gonna be happy with this, it's gonna create a pucker down here, isn't it? When I go like this, see it's gonna come down here and create a pucker. I'm just gonna go, I'm leaving it because it's gonna be um, on the back. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and remove this extra tear away that I put up here carefully because I don't wanna tear my stitches because we're gonna fold this down now. But see how this 
put a nice top stitching. So I'm going to get my seam ripper, and I like this fancy one better. And I'm going to carefully cut the stabilizer out behind the zipper. It's so much easier to do now while the machine is, while the project is hooped, because you get tension from the hoop. I learned that tip from Ricky Gardner, String Theory Fabric Art. I always give credit where credit is due. It makes more sense. And one of those things I was like, oh, why didn't I think of that? If you haven't checked out her group, make sure you do. She's, they're, they're really amazingly helpful over there. They're, there's a little bit of potty language, beware. But um, I'm not a huge swearer, but it doesn't bother me. But they're very helpful. Everybody's very friendly. And there's there's quite a bit of non-embroidery chat. If you just need advice, it's totally loud in that group, which a lot of groups are not like that. A lot of groups, there is no off topic. If you start chit-chatting about because you're mad at your husband and you just need to vent, that's not allowed in most groups. But Ricky doesn't mind. And everybody calls her mom. She's an amazing artist. Okay, so now I have that open so that we'll be able to turn our bag. We're gonna fold this down and we're gonna pull it as tautly as we can. Um, pull it from this side so you don't wanna open up your um, pockets. You don't wanna tear your pockets open. And then we're gonna tape this down. And I'm gonna have a, this is gonna be fun taping because it's also big. Uh, again, you can always um, kind of come forward from the front and pin it to the stabilizer from the front. But at this point, there's so much bulk that it usually will hang out okay just by taping it. All right, so I'm gonna hold this while I flip it. And now it's gonna start up here and back tack. And then it's gonna go down to the bottom. And then just like we had um, here, it's going to do some carry strips to um, carry it over to the other side of the hoop. And see how it's already jangling off. There's no way a 7511 needle would have gone through this. So choose your materials wisely. This was not a good selection, good choice. This machine's having a rough time with it. The, um, my multi-needle upstairs wouldn't have any trouble getting through this, but you can see this machine is having trouble. And before it goes, I'm gonna feel, make sure, sometimes those D-rings come loose, so make sure it didn't flip up on you. I'm gonna stop this in a second. I'm gonna just make sure that D-ring didn't come up on me. Okay, it didn't. Sometimes they do. Again, these are just carry stitches, travel stitches, whatever you want to call them, just to help guide your um, bag. Don't pucker up there. Okay, good. Uh, since I didn't have it taught down here, I was worried it was going to cause a pucker up there. This is going through a lot of layers. You have um, two layers of vinyl, two layers of lining, and um, the poly mesh. So there's a lot of layers here. All right, and the last step, um, number 14, is just to stop your machine from going to the center and getting stuck. Before we unhoop and remove everything, we're gonna turn it and go to the back and make sure everything's stitched out well. And I think I did a pretty good job centering this. I have a little bit of room to wiggle there. Um, if you didn't center it well, that it's still functional. I'm going to move my hoop down to home base so it's out of my way. I can do that on this machine. And then I'm going to go ahead and unhoop this. And I will try as hard as I can to stay in the camera view while I trim. But I'm just going to warn you, it's hard when you're trimming this and you're turning the bag. And look how I managed to get that stabilizer stitched up underneath there. What on earth, Kimberly? That added to the bulk of that area right there. I don't know how I managed that. I'm glad I'm almost done because I'm really tired and I probably have about 5,000 messages waiting for me because I have some ladies testing this 
a zipper pop or not the zipper pocket version the um the card slot pocket i actually didn't end up getting a pucker down there like i thought so i'm gonna go ahead and do a rough trim first um and just get um the bulk of this out of here try to do it on a trash can i'm going off camera because i don't want to land all this stuff in my embroidery machine but uh, I'll show you before I'm done. Oops, I cut the lining too short. You sh should generally leave a little bit of extra lining material and I just cut it right off. You should leave a little tab. It's in the PDF, you'll see it. Um, it makes it easier when you turn the bag right side out and I have to close it. I generally like to um, leave the D-ring strap connectors a little longer and the zipper tape a little longer and then I burn the edges of the zipper tape that way, if it starts to fray or something, um, it's not going to go all the way through the bag. And I didn't do a very good job laying down that exterior panel. The stitching got really close to it, but I think it's fine. So remove all the extra tape that you can. And I save these big pieces of stabilizer, and I use them to support pieces and these pieces of vinyl are big enough for d-ring strap connectors so I save those so I should have saved a little down here in the opening I should have made a little notch and I didn't so I'm going to go ahead and finish trimming this from the front so that I can see the stitching lines better trying to stitch it off the thing and I went right through my D-rings. Um, that's okay. It's hard to um, do that. This is really thick. So I still have enough room. Really thick. Again, will not recommend that you use this vinyl for an in-the-hoop bag unless you're using a more powerful machine. Okay, so I got the rough, rough done, and what I want to make sure is that I don't cut into my um, pocket in any way. So this keeps flopping down. That's extra material. We don't need that. Make sure you don't cut into the top of your zipper tape when you're trimming at the top, though. See, I have, here's the top of my zipper tape, so there's the seam. This is my basting line right here from my original piece, so you just don't want to cut into your zipper tape. So, or I'm sorry, this is my pocket zipper tape. So you gotta look over here for the other zipper tape. Make sure you don't cut into the top of that. Okay, I'm gonna get my um, sculpting scissors and I'm gonna go ahead and trim this a little bit more and put some notches in it. And that will help us make the curves more graceful. I'm actually not a big fan of those scissors. Um, I heard rave reviews about them in there. They were not cheap. Um, Tim Holtz, Jim Holtz, I, they're overrated to me. They, they do an okay job, but they're not excellent. You see how much they struggled and my little um, Kai scissors do a lot, a lot better job. And these are not meant to be going through all these layers. Okay, so and then I'm gonna go ahead and trim the bottom down here. I'm gonna try and fold back my lining pieces, I'm not trim that any more than it is. But I wanna get this vinyl trimmed down to about an eighth of an inch because it's so thick. Just try not to cut into your lining. All right, all right, there we go. I'm liking that much better. Now what you can do so you get nice curves is you notch the, the curves. So you use your good scissors and get in here and it's really thick, but you make these little notches. And that allows the material to spread out inside that curve underneath so you get a nice um, transition. And we can trim a little bit more of this vinyl. I'm not cutting the material, just the vinyl. All right, because it was so thick. It's 
So that's an alternative way you can do it, is you can cut the vinyl much thinner. So over here, I'm gonna go ahead and notch it though. So you'll see on both sides what it looks like, the difference when you trim it. When you're trimming, you don't wanna trim the fabric down that close to an eighth of an inch because it'll fray. You risk the fraying going into the, steam, the seam and then it's gonna tear. And granted, it's your lining, so it's inside. You shouldn't be getting, putting that much effort in your bag to tear it. All right, now here's gonna be the fun part, if I can turn this, because this vinyl is really rough. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and reach inside. Uh, hemostats work really well if you can get a grasp of the um, vinyl with the hemostats. So these are hemostats. I really like these with the rounded edge because I can um, use them to um, smooth out the edges of my bag when we're all done. So you have to get it in here and pinch it together. And I, this vinyl is really thick, so I'm not having any luck doing it. So instead, I'm just going to go ahead and I work one corner at a time. Go slowly. If you do end up tearing the birthing hole or the turning hole, it's not the end of the world. There's glue, there's seam tape, even sewing and thread, and you can fix it. But you ideally don't want to because the fabric could start to fray. You leave holes in the... Um, materials so I try to leave enough of a hole that it's not torture to turn it on this larger bags on the small bags <laughs> no people those are hard to turn I don't recommend you trying to do a five by seven bag if you have arthritis unless you've got somebody to help you not for these credit card slots for sure this is a lot of bulk in here so I got the beginning of it out so I find once I get one corner out, usually the other corner comes out easily. But I'm just working it gently through. And it takes a couple minutes. And I don't have software to fast forward this part unless I cut it out, but you guys wanna see it. So um, I think I'm gonna invest in some better software. I keep trying to do all that with iMovie. I mean, it takes, hours to try and reprocess a small clip and then it doesn't finish and I don't know if I just need a new laptop or uh, it's not happening I don't want to buy a new laptop right now I don't have two thousand dollars just to throw in a new laptop I, I'm a Mac so but just keep working it because remember you have those credit card slots in there and that zipper pocket Once you get, see, now you see I'm getting to the credit cards. Once you get to this point, then you can keep folding it open and fold it out. It, it's the way it sounds, I'm folding and pulling out and then folding it open over it. It's hard to describe what it is you're doing. So hopefully you guys can see my hands enough to see what I'm doing. But I'm just going gingerly and slowly. There's, this isn't a marathon, it's not a race. You take the time and do it right and slow. One thing is, um, if you watched my videos before, um, you'll know I don't close my birthing hole until I turn my back totally right side out again because I find that sometimes there's a mistake in your bag and if you've closed that birthing hole, then it makes it really difficult to turn the bag inside out again and fix that mistake. Like if Somehow when you're turning it, that happened on, where's the bag at? That happened on this one. Somehow when I was turning it, I don't know what I did, but the thread. So because I haven't closed this yet, I can turn this right side out again and um, fix that on my sewing machine. And if you don't have a sewing machine, you could probably even fix it with some glue. And that way the bag's not ruined. But once you close the birthing hole, then you have a whole mess of trying to open that birthing hole and close it again so it looks neat. Because I use glue to close mine. I was using double stick tape, and if you watch my earlier videos, you'll see that is my recommendation, but I stopped doing that because I found that it left a hard ridge right here, but the glue doesn't. The glue dries malleable, and I use Fabri-Tac from Beacon. And um, it has a fast setting time 
Okay, so now we're almost there. And I normally like to get the entire bag pushed out before I go to the to the right side, but with the credit card slots, I find that's not always possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip to the outside, but now you can see the credit card slots here and the pocket. Now we're gonna go ahead and oh, reach inside and finish opening your zipper all the way. Sometimes I have to like pull it, start to open it, close to get a, a, the momentum to open it um, the rest of the way. I don't know why, but sometimes it does that. It's doing it to me now, it doesn't wanna open. There we go. And I open it as far as I can and then turn the bag to the right side. So right now we have it inside out. Now we're gonna turn it right side out. Oh, and if you're wondering, this is Carnival. And I did not copy my bag after anybody. I had somebody send me a message and say that another group said that I basically copied their bag, the, the designer's bag. No, I didn't. I don't copy other people. I have about five or 10 different appliques that I play, play with. I doodle at work. Um, my friend, um, she doodles, she sends me ideas. And I had this one um, mostly done. I had a, a little bit more of a curve there. And I saw this fabric and I was like, oh, it reminded me of a carnival. And it's Mardi Gras time. So I, like, oh, that's just what it is. So I like, I'm gonna swell swoop it up here. And um, my friend actually wanted it to come up higher than that. But I had, so I kind of combined two to, two ideas and then added that little um, floor de lis I'm proud of myself. I don't do digitizing of that kind of stuff very often. So I was pleased with how it came out. So, oh, I really wish I would have used a different color satin stitching on this. Oh well. Once it does finally get turned out, it might be a really cute bag. <laughs> All right, so I'm still working at it. And um, when you are working with this vinyl, I, I, don't, I don't do it, but if you put it in a dryer, a hot dryer for a few minutes, or if you have a blow dryer and blow on it, it makes it much easier to um, turn out. I personally, I just try to avoid vinyls like this. This one was way too thick, and I had a feeling when I was rolling it out and cutting it, and I'm like, I don't know about this one. No, I mean, if you're doing a, a regular sewing bag, and you're doing this on the bottom panels or something where it's a large surface, it's probably great. But I would not recommend this for an in-the-hoop bag. You see how much I'm struggling. It's really hard to get this turned out. It's really heavy. I mean, it's going to be cute once it's done, but heavy. My son fell asleep in there waiting for me. He doesn't usually do that. He's been, this poor kid was sick. He's still recovering. He missed like, three or four days. He missed more days of school this year being sick than he has. He's in second grade than he has since he started school. He's never ever, hardly ever sick. I mean, he had a high fever so he couldn't go. So this is a time where the hemostats come in handy. See, I'm having a hard time getting that out. So I clamp them together so that I can get the rounded edge in there where I can't reach with my hand. And if you reach in underneath where the hole is still at in here, it's even easy. It's even easier. But you want to be very careful doing this because I've poked a hole in a bag before thinking the bag was um, strong enough and it wasn't. The vinyl wasn't and I poked a hole right through it. So um, be very careful. Go gingerly. And slowly unless you know for sure that that particular vinyl can handle it and now I got that out so again when I said in the beginning about knowing the right materials and knowing the source this bag has a, a gentle gliding um, curve to the bottom and the top this vinyl is rigid and not wanting to form that curve it was not a good selection for this bag so if I was the customer and I'm like looking at this and I'm probably going to have a hard time getting it out and I don't know better, I'm going to like 
I'd be tempted to say, oh, this is just a bad digitized bag and the designer, you know, did a bad job and I want my money back or whatever, when in fact it's not, it's the material. And to tell you the difference, look at this one. This was beautiful. It turned, look how graceful the curves are. It turned beautifully because the material is a different material. It's more pliable and it was more agreeable to these curves than this material is. This material is very rigid and it's almost like marine vinyl. Maybe it is, and I didn't, I just, I gotta look. Maybe the raised dots is considered marine vinyl. Okay, so I almost got it out. So I'm still working. And then what I like to do is take the rounded edge of the hemostats and rub it along the seam. And that helps to roll that seam out and give you that more graceful look. And then if you have one like this who wants to resist that um, rolling out those curves, you can roll it with your fingers in between your fingers and then put some clips on it. Okay, I got it mostly out. I'm gonna go ahead and roll this. This corner here, take your hemostats, put them closed up underneath that zipper and pop it. I like to support the zipper this way with my thumb and pop it open. And that's how you get that little piece of zipper, that last piece out of there. And it's a little harder because we, um, remember we top stitched that um, lining inside here. So you get a little, it's not gonna come out as much as if we didn't. But you get that little piece out and I don't have it out yet. I can still see there's there. So um, just pop that little piece out and then you get that nicer look at that top corner there. And I might have to put this up underneath the lining and get it, but right now. So there we go. And then the same thing over here, just get the hemostats where you, sometimes my fingers can do it. But see how this lining wants to come up? Push, push that lining down and twist around and pull the zipper out carefully so you don't cut it and you'll get that out. Okay, and I have some strings here to cut them off. And now you see I have four slots in there, but if I would have gone much th thicker than that, I wouldn't be able to reach. It's already a reach to get that fourth slot. So I'll put a card down there that I don't use very often. What do I do with my other cards, my test cards? Oh, for goodness sakes, Kimberly, I had my Apple gift cards in here. <laughs> oh, anyway, so you can see that. Um, you got four slots in there and then you have your little pocket to get your money and again don't make that pocket so deep I'll, I'll put recommendations on the size but there's enough in there that you can put um some change or whatever and it does get firm with that card in there so keep that in mind but and here we go and so here it the zipper wants to not close so again you just work that down until you get it to close. And once you work it through there, it'll have a memory and it'll close for you all the time. All right, guys, I hope you like it. Um, no name for it yet. I'm working on it. Um, but this is the next in the applique series and um, sneak peek of this one too. So this one, you can, since I used a contrasting thread, you can see it much better. I love it. It's gonna be um, a great showcase for a uh, fussy cut design and I hope you all like it. Thanks. Bye-bye.